All right. Hey guys, this is Ken from Yarbo. Uh, we just want to take a minute to show you guys the differences between the Snowbot S1 Beta that we had out last winter and the Yarbo S1. Um, so let's go through the S1 quickly uh, beta and show you some of the things that we learned and some of the things we changed and, and ended up enhancing with the Yarbo. So this was our S1 uh, beta. You could see three beacons here. These three beacons is what it used to locate itself. So you would have to put these three beacons around your driveway. Uh, these were rechargeable, battery operated. So we, we did find that in a snowstorm, uh, people obviously didn't want to go out and recharge these batteries. They were also liable to, be, to get knocked down uh, if a snow plow came by. So we had these three beacons. Those three beacons actually spoke to this beacon uh, on the top here, which was another big piece to take on and off all the time and liable to break. Um, but again, just much more of a cumbersome setup. So uh, other than that, some other things that we learned, uh, this is one main structure. So if you can see here, there is no break in the structure. There's no bend in the structure. So if we pick it up, um, it just picks up all at once. Um, so that's, that's another thing that hindered us in a couple ways. Uh, one of the reasons that was not a good idea was because it didn't allow us to go up steep inclines and down um, declines very well. It would get hung up very, very easily. In fact, if you just picked up the front end a little bit, you would then lose traction completely on these back treads. Um, so that was an issue. Uh, also up front, we had a single stage impeller. That single stage impeller actually worked very well, even up to 12 inches of snow if it was powder, but if it was heavy wet snow, it did not work well at all. Um, so that was another issue. Then some just optimizations with the chute itself, the, d the design of the uh, intake here uh, and the chute coming out. Also the chute was manually adjustable, not automatically adjustable. Um, so that's another thing. If we come around this side, thanks Steven, Steven's behind us operating the camera. Um, the other big thing with this was that the treads were short. Um, and so if you see the treads here and where the body lines actually end, it was much, much shorter than the actual unit. So if you wanted to back up and you were on an incline, you would get caught very quickly on the back. These bottom wheels almost acted as an anchor to the Snowbot. Um, we put them in originally if someone had to move the unit. That's why the handle was here as well. But the new unit, which we'll go over in a minute, actually has handles on the sides built in. And if you ever did have to move it, because you could take off the front module now and take out the battery, the unit is actually pretty light if you need to move it. Um, it's, not, it's not a featherweight, but it's light enough that you could move it around. Um, so that's, those are really the main things, extending the treads, going with a two-stage setup. Um, other things that you can't see, much more powerful motors, uh, bigger battery, Let's see, obviously RTK GPS, so those three um, beacons behind me are obviously no longer used, so there's none of that to set up. You'll have either that little base station to set up, um, and that's it, or you can use like your state's end trip network if you want, in which case you won't need a base station. Um, so there's that end of it. Uh, other than that, that's, those are kind of the, the main improvements that we learned. The real point of this unit was to see, can it survive? with the battery we developed in the cold, which it could, do the algorithms work, which they do, um, and then find really the weaknesses. So we already knew that it probably wouldn't handle wet snow as well as we'd like it to. And uh, we went into it knowing that though, we just wanted to see the basics worked and could an autonomous snowblower survive, you know, at negative 20 uh, during the winter time in say Minnesota or upstate New York or Canada. And that's really what this served its purpose for. So. That being said, let's move on to the uh, Snowbot, uh, sorry, the Yarbo uh, S1. Uh, so we'll move this guy out of the way. All right, and now we have the Yarbo S1. So a couple things that you'll notice right away, just going back to the, the unit itself. Um, it has a two-stage setup now, as I'm sure everyone's seen. Um, so we have our two-stage setup here. This is independent of the body itself, so I'm sure you guys have seen in videos you can remove this. It has some sensors and a camera here. 
It has other sensors here. This is your adjustable chute, um, which you can adjust from the app or the controller. There are integrated handles on each side where you can pick the machine up by the front if you need to. Um, there are handles on each side here and here. There is a warning light here and two more integrated LEDs here. Tail lights in the back, headlights in the front. Okay, some other important points if we come around the side as compared to the original Snowbot. These treads have been increased greatly and they now stick out past the actual chassis in the back and past the actual chassis in the front. Uh, that's really important because now we can go up much steeper inclines, down steeper inclines. Uh, it, it's much more built for, um, you know, just much more agile going across different types of terrain um, and different heights. So that could be where your driveway meets the road um, or a steep incline in your backyard that you need to get up to cut the grass whatever it may be. These are two RTK GPS antennas. Um, some interesting notes and some questions we got versus the uh, Yarbo S1 and the Yarbo main body in the marketing videos versus what we've been showing now. And we had mentioned in a couple of uh, posts that the production unit is this guy here. Uh, has subtle differences between the marketing version of the Yarbo. So some of those differences are two antennas. Two antennas are here because it needs, the Arbo needs to know the angle at which it's moving. And originally we had one antenna and the shortcoming there was that it had to be able to drive straight for five to 10 feet in order to, to calibrate its angle. But there were things involved in that that could send off that calibration and make it inaccurate. And we didn't want to have that as, as a potential issue because that really is the baseline when Yarbo starts to work. So now with two antennas, it always knows the heading it needs to go to, so we don't have to worry about that. Um, some other things, you would have seen almost a fender here. The problem with that fender was that it didn't give us enough structural integrity. This you can actually lift uh, if you wanted to by these handles. This has the battery and everything in it, so just to give you an idea. Um, so very strong. Um, so that's why we don't have the fenders anymore. If you leaned on them, if you put you know, a good amount of pressure on them, they were liable to break and we wanted to do that for durability. Uh, the other thing that helps it with inclines is the linear actuator that's built into each module. So uh, actually, Stephen, I'm gonna ask if you could just raise this up and down. Um, so as you can see here, we can raise it up and now we can raise it back down. And the idea is that when you're making a plan, you can actually tell Yarbo as you're using Yarbo to map your driveway, let's say, you can move this up and down in the high and low points of your driveway. And then Yarbo will actually follow your direction every time it goes out at different parts of your driveway. So it could always get as close to the driveway as possible. If you had a gravel driveway, you can raise this up and keep it up if you need to. Uh, but other than that, really it's designed to mimic a human in that you're giving it the direction to move up and down and it's following that direction all through your map. So if you have high points on your driveway, low points on your driveway, you can always get as close to the ground as possible. Um, so that's really important. Um, other than that, again, much bigger battery in here. Um, RTK GPS, so we're not using any of the beacons. Um, obviously a modular front end, uh, wireless charging for sure, that's a big thing. Um, and the tow hitch, obviously in the back, here's your emergency stop button. So a lot of things that people are concerned about is the weight of the actual unit itself. And it is a heavy unit, it needs to be because of the snow. Um, heavy unit being relative, it's much lighter than a regular snowblower, but it's uh, about 140 pounds with the front end uh, S1 attachment and then the main body itself. Um, but luckily, because it's modular in design, a lot of that can come apart. Um, if you ever needed to move it, you can do that pretty easily if it wasn't under its own power. So to give you an idea, if we did have to move this, uh, the first thing we would do is take the battery off. And it just slides out. Just put the cover back on. I'm not gonna fasten this in just because this is more so for demonstration. Uh, we'll quick lift the tabs to the modular. The module, excuse me, and every module has 
these tabs built in. You could then just lift off the front. And we already had this disconnected um, just for this demonstration. And then at this point, if you did need to move it, you can lift it up. I mean, again, it's, uh, it's not light, but you know, uh, one person can most likely move it. Two people can easily move it. So uh, we've taken this unit, we've picked it up, put it in our trunks before, you know, moved it around from location to location. Um, and it was really made to do that from the start. So whether you're taking the lawnmower with you or the snowblower with you, or the leaf blower with you, the idea is that it's modular, um, easy to move if you had to. And in the future with other modules, obviously you want that capability as well, so. Okay, so that being said, I'm gonna connect the front again. Uh, actually, maybe I should 